What's up everyone, it's Sam here, back again for the Lore Lounge, here to kick off a new series that I wanted to do for a while now, Warhammer 40k Lore. But this won't be a traditional lore breakdown or explanation in the traditional sense, since there are already a few really good YouTubers out there making amazing 40k Lore content already. What I want to focus on more is the little one-off stories that get passed over or that could be found in strange places. For example, a few paragraphs or a page in a codex book that has a really cool random story, or a baseline or a one-off campaign stories that appear in the Warhammer 40k RPG books. I actually have a pretty big collection of the different Warhammer role-playing game books, so there's a lot of content that just gets looked over that I would really love to share. So hopefully you enjoy some of these one-off stories from the Warhammer 40k universe, and whether you're on a long drive right now or you're writing your next Warhammer 40k campaign, why don't you sit back, relax, and let's just hop into it. Irenee's Station. Location, classified by order of the Inquisition. Colonel Brynar gazed numbly at the display screen, his fingers tapping on his thigh in agitation. The dark icons representing the Eldar Raiders were quickly encircling his forces who were guarding the command tower. More and more of the blue icons of his army flickered and then disappeared as units failed to report in or presumed destroyed. The situation was looking hopeless. Comlink orders were becoming difficult to issue as more and more comm channels were filled with the gibbering cries of terror and torment. The Eldar attack was fluid, ever-changing, and impossible to muster a force against in one place. Snapping out of his day state, the colonel strode to the armor glass window and looked out. The cold clinical icons of the strategic display did little to justify the horrific scene that greeted him. Like a swarm of ravening beasts, the Eldar was spilling across the plains. Waves of jet bikes moved rapidly from one defensive position to the next, swiftly overrunning the beleaguered Imperial forces. Around them hovered swarms of Eldar warriors mounted on a one-man anti-grav craft, darting in and around the main enemy squads to hurry the retreating forces and sow confusion and anarchy. The larger shapes of the Eldar transports and heavy weapons vehicles glided effortlessly through the darkened sky, pulses of energy lighting up the twilight of the dusk. Wherever the Eldar attacked, a ragged stream of guardsmen fled back towards the command complex. Many of them were quickly run down by the swift Eldar, and piles of human corpses littered the approaches to the Citadel. As night rapidly fell, the automatic searchlights lit up, bathing the battlefield in roving columns of light. For Briner, this only added to the sense of unreal nightmare as shadowy shapes flitted through the beams, the pulse of weapons erupting across the Ibn horizon as the Eldar moved ever closer. Within minutes, the perimeter alarms were wailing, notifying the defenders of a breach in the outer wall. The defensive batteries opened fire, shaking the command tower with the recoil of 50 guns firing in unison, cutting a swath through the onslaught of Eldar. However, the Eldar responded with even more ferocity. Thin rays of black light, seen only as they cut through the searchlight's beams, picked out the guns in turn, systematically eliminating the control bunker's armaments. The searchlights were the next target, and within a few heartbeats, the only light to be seen was the pale glimmering aura of interior lights shining through vision slits. An explosion rocked the bunker, and the lanterns inside flickered and failed as the energy grid shut down. The bunker was plunged into darkness for half a minute before the backup systems came online and lit the inside of the bastion in their ruddy glow. All the while, the comnet was full of the shouts of desperate soldiers, the screams of the wounded and the gibbering of men driven insane with terror. Another claxton sounded, low and ominous, and one of the command staff reported that the outer doors had been breached. The Eldar were inside the building. Switching his gaze to the internal views, Briner watched the progress of the aliens' attack as they ran down corridors, unleashing hails of deadly fire from their exotic weapons. His men were falling back steadily. The survivors were hardened to the wiles of the foe now. Resigned to their deaths, they were selling their lives as dearly as possible. It was pointless, though. The Eldar shot and cut down the men by the score. At the forefront were heavily armored warriors with gleaming power weapons. Compared to the ruthless barbarity of the other Eldar, these warriors were advancing in a cool, detached fashion, mercilessly dispatching anyone who stood in their path. Brynar saw Commissioner Hellsreich cut in half with one blow from a massive, powered glaive. His bodyguard of stormtroopers slaughtered with equal ease. It was only then when Brynar realized that the Eldar were scant moments from reaching the control room. Turning to Virax, the tech priest, he straightened his back and took a deep breath. Irene's station is lost. Prepare the plasma reactor for critical overload. We will not let them take us alive. 
Ooh, man, that was dark. So there you have it, an account of the Dark Eldar raid. Um, this story can be found in the Dark Eldar 2nd Edition Codex. Links, as always, will be in the description down below. And let me know in the comments what you think of the video, and let me know what you would have done if you were Colonel Brynar or any Imperials at the station during the raid. And if you're new to Warhammer 40k lore or you're not familiar with the Dark Eldar, you may want to read up a little bit before answering that question too fast, because from everything I know about the Dark Eldar, a fate must much, much worse than death awaits you if they catch you alive. So, as always, thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time at the Lore Lounge.